This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This lesson is on using HTML tables in your web page and outputting an HTML table from your PHP. Look at this form. It looks similar to something we've seen before, but things line up kind of nice. I've got the number of apples, I've got the number of pairs, and the boxes line up right below each other. And I've even got titles here to say what each column is. Let's go back and look briefly at a lesson we've done before where I used apples and pears. See here, things don't line up so well. These are simple paragraphs that have the input tags that followed. Let's see how we can use a table to get things lined up better. First, I'm going to go ahead and enter some data. 11 and 7 for pairs, and then I'll click the Submit button. Now look, we have another table here. This table has a border on it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've got things lined up very nice. We've got a description, a calculated amount, and all the numbers line up in this column. So it's very easy to see a grid-like structure using an HTML table. Let's go over and now look at some of the code. That's the simple math code. That's the one that was not lined up. I just had a paragraph with the number of apples, and then I stuck the input tag right after that. So it just kind of laid out wherever it was going to go. If I had a longer title here, that input area would have been pushed even farther to the right. Same thing down here with the number of pairs. Let's see how I took that and improved it by putting it in an HTML table. So, this is the basic structure of a table. You put the table tag at the beginning. It's just the word table in the angle brackets. And you must have an end table tag, forward slash table. If you leave that out and you have other information on your web page, it may appear above the table and you'll be scratching your head. Why did that happen? So it's really important to get that end table tag in right away. Usually when I'm coding these, I put the end table tag in first, right after the table tag, and then I fill in the middle. Now, every table has rows and it has cells, data cells if you want. Just kind of like a spreadsheet, really. If we go back and look at the output, you see this. It looks a little bit spreadsheet-like, this grid structure. You see the number of rows down here, and each one of these is a table cell with inside each row. I have two cells per row. So the way you get that to happen is you use TR begins a row and forward slash TR ends a row. So you need to have that for every row. The first row contains headings. Go back and look again. See these bolded headings here? Those are the headings, and the way you get that bolding is you don't have to apply a style or anything. You just put a TH for table heading, and that's what will show up in the cell on the first row we have there as bolded. From here on out, when we're going to put other information in the table that won't be bolded, we're going to use a beginning TD tag and an ending TD tag instead of the beginning th and the ending th. So look, I had two cells per row. So I have two TDs. Okay? I've got a beginning and an ending, and a beginning and ending as well. Look at this, however. I've got that input tag that I used to put in the paragraph. It's sitting there as a cell by itself. That works just fine. You saw it. So this allows things to line up very cleanly in these tables. And likewise, I have here with the number of pairs and the input tag for the number of pairs. And so when I submit this and call the program up in the form tag, we find that it outputs a table as well. Let's go ahead and look at that PHP code. Here at the top, this so is the first PHP block. This is the beginning of it. I get the apples and pears, just like I did before. I'm doing the same math that I did before. There's really no difference. The same math that we saw in the simple math presentation just a little earlier. But notice here, I end the PHP block because I want to go back to writing native HTML. I don't want to put it out of a print statement. One of the great things about PHP is to try to keep as much HTML in HTML format natively as possible and only use the print statement where you need it or it's convenient to put out the HTML in it. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. So I've got the beginning of the table here. On the output, I made this one border equals 1. 
and that was one pixel border to make it look like you could see where the outlines of the table were. And the first table that I did, and if we go back here, see I didn't have the outline, so I couldn't see how it lined up. But here I can. Back to the code. Okay, now I chose here, instead of having the row and cells on separate lines, I put them together here in one row at a time because it was pretty easy to do in a print statement. It just sort of made sense for me to do it that way. It was very easy to code. So here, again, that's the beginning row, the end of the row, the beginning of the first cell, and the end of the first cell, the beginning of the second cell, and the end of the second cell, the beginning tag. Okay, the backslash n, as you may recall, will allow the page to be formatted in such a way that if I do a view page source on the output web page, it's easier to read. Let me show you. Here I'm going to right click, do view page source, and things line up at least a little bit more reasonable. If I left out those backslash ends, this whole thing would show as one big long horizontal row. And it's really hard to debug and to look at your table later and to see what's going on if you have some kind of problem. So I highly recommend putting in these backslash ends to get a new line. So things line up. I'm just writing row after row after row. Now, it's usually a good practice to try to keep all of the text of your statement within the viewable area of the screen. Makes it easier to see what's going on without having to do a lot of horizontal scrolling. So these last lines here, I couldn't do that gracefully, so I broke it up. Remember, the print statement is just sending out text to the browser. It doesn't care how it comes, whether it comes in one print statement or three or whatever. So here I have the beginning of the row in the first cell, the end of the first cell, and the beginning of the next one. And then just the data that's going to go in there, the divided apples. And then on another print statement, I chose to break it up and put it down here. Even though it could have fit over here, I just found this a little easier to read. There's no real right answer. The idea is to make your code simple and maintainable, easy to understand, and to make changes to should something come up. Look here. Remember the number format function I showed you in a previous lesson? I can use it here as well and print that as part of the information that goes in one of the cells. Likewise with the modulo. So we go down here. Remember to end the table. I close the PHP block, and now I can just use native HTML. I don't have to put it in a print statement. In fact, if I did, I would get an error if I do it outside of the PHP tags. So this ends our lesson on HTML tables, both putting them in a web page and outputting them from a PHP program.